Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I've got a video here that uh, there's going to be a slideshow that goes with it. And it's, um, I guess it would be a change of practice. We have a lot of teachers in our building who do progress monitoring um, as a way to utilize an early warning system of uh, information so they can, you know, go about working with kids. I think informally, a lot of our teachers do this anyway. Um, we're going to take you through a few things here. And uh, you'll notice that image. I'm gonna go and turn my camera off. You'll notice that image right there, the gentleman sitting on a chair, on another chair, on a table, way up high. Um, this, is my, this is my visualization in my brain whenever I think of communication. And I think it's school-wide communication. And even though this video is for counselors, teachers, administrators, that's pretty school-wide uh, in my book. And, you know, sometimes we over communicate, sometimes we can under communicate. And what we aspire to do is try to make sure that every communication we send out, um, whether it's got multiple levels on it uh, for different stakeholder groups, um, whatever, we're, we're hitting all the right, um, I guess, the right strokes. So on this one, I'm probably doing a little bit of over communicating. Um, on something that is really quite simple, but because it's a change of practice, I really need to make sure I give it explicit information so that you can have some great takeaways. The other thing I'm leaning into would be, um, okay, over communicating. And then the other thing would be uh, timely communications because the very first deadline is roughly just over two weeks from today. And even though this isn't a large, um, chunk of labor that's going to go into this. It's something we want to continue and make it kind of an ongoing thing. So it's more of a build it and then refine it as the year goes along so we can do something with it. So we're going to talk about the it. We're going to talk about the what, the why, and the how. Okay. So this is in place of one of our SIP boosters we were not able to get to. And that was the one I was going to do with this, the stakeholder group known as the students. And we weren't able to come together, but I think we can fit that one in in our last uh, culturally responsive practices uh, PD. So this is going to be a substitution for that and timely um, for sure. So let me go ahead and click along here. Uh, about a month ago, roughly, um, I sent this out, this message out in our ongoing updates, our weekly updates, and I alluded to um, the semester one F list. It was going to be a form. We actually had one of our teachers actually complete the forms for either 14 or 15 students that had E's or F's in her math class. And when she was done completing the forms, uh, it took her about a half hour. And we figure about two minutes per, I thought it was gonna be about, about a minute per. Um, we thought that's too much. Um, and then we also processed the notion of doing some type of a EF um, Google form at the end of every grading period. And it's just too darn many clicks to do a Google form. So we processed that with the BLT. A couple of our teachers um, who are BLT members also processed the idea, the notion of doing something more on a Google Sheet. So the very first version we came out with, I'm going to show it to you really quick here just so you guys can know what we are avoiding. So I'm going to share this tab. And hopefully you can see that. So you would answer the first question, yes or no. Do you have any students with an E or F? I think um, in your in your class, I think this was just the failure list for this one. So if you clicked on no, it would be a submission after that. If you clicked on yes, which most teachers would, you then click on the next. And it's going to give you, I don't know, probably about 11 things, 10 things all together you would think about and decide if that if that's part of what that student uh, has in terms of challenges. OK, so I'm going to go back to our, our original slideshow. So we've gone away from that. Uh, we've gone away from this. We haven't really launched anything yet. So that's going to take me to the next slide. And this is our semester one gate grade distribution data. OK, this looks pretty normal for our school in terms of uh, before the pandemic, okay? I don't even look at the last year and a half because it's so different than any other years. But I, if I go back to the fall of 2019, we're, we're pretty close. We actually have a higher level of A's 
and about the same level of E's and F's, okay? So just know that's kind of how the distribution works. Um, this is uh, something that we've pushed hard in the building, especially the second quarter of first semester. It's kind of this war on E's, this war on F's. We did a mid-year summer school, which culminated right before the end of, uh, well, right before midwinter break. And hopefully we got a lot of kids who were able to pivot that grade and get their ease to be, you know, something better in, in credit earning. So that was an approach we've been taking. You know, I know some schools have used this failure is not an option. I can't remember if that was Riverside or Mountain View. And it's kind of easy to jump on these bandwagons when you see people getting results. But here's what I'm going to suggest for us. Instead of this, as we're working with our kids, let's let's talk about a different way to narrate what's going to happen, the different way to hold dialogue with our kids about moving them towards their aspirations. And we all know um, there's not a staff member or a student that shows up to our school um, hoping to fail or hoping to have a day where they didn't get anything accomplished. I think people show up here, uh, whether it's formal, informal, we have goals in mind when we show up in the building. So if we speak to our kids in terms of not focusing on the E's and S, but getting those grades up and, and why not you? Maybe now is your time for students who maybe struggled in the past and, and just speaking life into the aspirations of wanting to do better. So that's just something I'm throwing out there, something that I think we all do at times and some maybe more than others, but I think if we kind of make that our building mantra, instead of a war on F's or E's, more like, hey, this is about you. We really need you guys to invest time in yourselves. That it's important because eventually this is all going to culminate into something big for you. So that's that. Uh, really, the the what I want to talk about today is multi-tiered system of supports, our MTSS system, and the part our teachers, counselors, and administrators play in this with an early warning tracking um, effort. So this is something we haven't done before on a school-wide level. Our ninth grade teams are doing something with this with their 60 to 80 kids they share. Our special ed teachers do this at least on a couple week, maybe once a month basis uh, on tracking the kids they have on their caseload, even though they may not have all the kids in their classes, they keep track of how they're doing. You know, the health of their social emotional, the health of their IEP, the health of their grades and attendance and those kind of things. So what we've developed um, is going to be, I think it's going to be pretty profound. I think it's going to make a big difference. All the practices we see going on around the country, predominantly at middle schools and elementary schools, and some of the bigger high schools have been bold enough to move forward with something like this, an early warning tracking system involving the people on the front lines, our teachers. Um, the results have been really good. So here's, here's the photo to kind of let you know, here's where I'm trying to hook you to get all your attention right now. And that is we do have um, this many grades. If you go back to that grade distribution chart, there was, you know, 1,759 E and F grades. If we would have done the practice I'm going to show you here first semester, that's how many of those grades we would have been looking at, okay? It represents a lot less students. I think around maybe about 1,200 students. Um, and they may not be the same student. They may be the same students. I'm not sure. I don't have a way to... Uh, Kind of extrapolate that information but we would be as a school entering that many grades into this uh google sheet that i'll show you here in a few minutes so yeah it's pretty large volume it's really important that we do this on a precise level we're doing it together we're entering the exact same information so that when our counselors our administrators our tier two our tier three teams as part of this mtss can look at these pieces of information, put kids into groups sometimes, sometimes as individuals, and then we can get them some of the extra supports that they might need outside of your classroom. Now, out of these 1,759 E's and F's from mid quarter one, not every one of those students or those grades really needed an outside intervention. Some did, and some got them. Some didn't, and that's okay. And some that didn't get them, um, we don't even know right now. And that's why we're building out this system so we can hit kids where they really need to have those supports. Because for some of our kids that sit there in a classroom and they do nothing, I mean, the first question as a teacher I would want to know is, are they doing nothing because they won't do anything? Or is it more of a skills-based confidence level and they can't do anything? And I think 
our teachers are the best ones to, to be able to get that information to the next level. All right, let's move forward here. Here's a sampling of what the form is going to look like. It does look like. Um, it looks pretty involved here, but for each student who has an E or an F at midterm three, you would have to enter your name, name of the class, maybe it's algebra, maybe it's uh, PE, maybe it's automotives, whatever that might be. Student's last name, first name, current grade, the current grade they have in the class, it's either gonna be an E or an F right now. I dream for the days when we're gonna to get to Ds, but right now we have such a large volume of Es and Fs, that's gonna be our focus. And then the current percentage they have. Okay, then of the next, you'll see they're kind of a gold color and a maroon color. You're only going to have to indicate three of those, whatever there are there. I think there's, what, seven, there's 12, 13. There's 13 different indicators that could get in the way of kids being successful. Of those 13, if you have a student with an E or an F, we only want to know the top three. The next part in purple tell, tells us about what assets the kids may have shown so far. And then the next part, the green ones, tells us a little bit about what the classroom teacher has done so far is about reaching out for different types of supports. Then you have an opportunity to give us, you know, briefly just some comments. Now, remember, you're going to have teams of uh, administrators and counselors looking at this information. And if everything holds true, we're going to be looking at about 1,700 lines of this, okay? So this is going to be a pretty big tool, but then we're going to break it out into these different indicators for why students aren't doing well. And then we can get busy on figuring out which of our current structures we have of support. Maybe we're going to need to develop some, but I think we're going to be okay with what we have. Okay, early warning tracking, what it does. Okay, if you're wanting to know why, uh, it helps schools create a level playing field for kids who need a little bit more. I guess the best way to look at that or one way you can look at that is kind of a, <clears throat> a deficit model. Uh, we all know how much our kids struggled when they weren't able to come to the school, when we were doing everything through a screen. And what I often said during that time is we can't level the playing field for the kids like we can when they show up to Auburn High School. This is another way of doing that. Early warning tracking allows schools to use methods that best fit the barriers and challenges that our students face. Early warning tracking allows schools to make unbiased decisions on best next steps because we get a cadre of people together. We take a look at what the issues might be, the indicators, and then we can start looking at best practices. It allows tier two and three, two, three, tier three teams focus on what matters most for students who come up short. It's very much a simple data system, okay? We're not going into deep testing results. It's just what we see on the front lines. And it does require teacher input. And in the back end, it's gonna require student output. Uh, the early warning tracking provides inputs to the larger multi-tiered system of supports, making the difficult job of teaching a little bit easier. And that is the theory behind this. Facilitates best outcomes with a small menu of tier two and tier three interventions. We have a pretty big menu right now. And what we're hoping to do is slim it down to a few practices that we can get really good at at Auburn High School. Um, we also have a continuum services to choose from. I'm not going to open up that document. It'll probably blow your mind. There's a lot of information on there, but it helps our tier two and tier three teams really see what we have for the next level to help kids out with. Okay, this is what the form looks like. Um, and this is the master form this is what you're looking at right now. And what the master form has is exactly what each of your forms will have on them. and. Uh, it provides proactive communication so that kids can positively grow and develop in academic and related social, social emotional realms. So we wanna consider this practice as part of a tier one universal practice because we don't wanna see a lot of names on this, okay? And as time goes by, as we get better with our interventions, um, the numbers should continue to drop. And it's gonna trend slowly, but hopefully the trend goes in a good way. You'll see at the bottom, if you can make that out on your screen, we have the names of all of our teachers and they're put in here by <clears throat> departments, alphabetically within departments. So I put native ed right at the beginning so Leslie didn't have to go look for her stuff. I put hers up front because everyone else is in a multi-person department and we just went alphabetically. So CTEs up front and then you go alphabetically through the people in that. And I think ELA is the next, and ELL all the way on down. 
to World Lang. So I'm sorry, Carmen. I think you're at the tail end. You're going to have to go all the way to the end of it. But that's kind of the way this is organized, just so you guys know. Each of you will get your own singular form, so you can keep track of your own kids. Again, only E and F students, okay? Only those are the ones you need to report out when it comes to those deadlines. All right, so this is the first part of that. Um, looks like I copy-pasted or cut-pasted from Leslie's sheet. And this is if she had three kids, if these were the three students who have E's or F's, this is what that part of the reporting would look like. Now I'm gonna take us on down the line for each of the headers so you can see kind of what it is we're looking for. And uh, again, when you get to those gold and maroon colored headers, um, indicators, you're only gonna indicate three. Now you might have four or five you can pick out, but guys, we can't use that kind of um, information. When we get to the, the fourth or fifth one, we're, we're gonna run out of uh, supports, I guess you could say. We gotta figure out what our own capacity is with multi with, with tier two. And with tier three, <clears throat> the reason I say that is we want to get good at a few things. So we're going to ask you to keep it to three things or less. And then the lowest number would be the highest indicator that's having the most issues for the students, okay? It might only be one. You might only check off low attendance because you might only see the student two, maybe one time a week, and you don't know why, okay? So that would be uh, really important to remember only up to three. So let me see, hang on here. Um, if there are assignments um, that are not turned in that have a direct impact on if the student passes your class, you would use that. And I'm gonna go through each one of these to give you a little bit of idea which each one of them represent of the indicators. So that'd be work not turned in. This would be assessment scores, okay? If they have low assessment scores, missing assessment scores, assessments that can still be retaken, okay? The next one would be low attendance. I'm not going to read each one of these two. You guys can stop the video and read those to yourselves. But again, that could end up being one of the top three indicators. Social emotional needs. Um, that's another one, especially coming out of the pandemic. I think we're seeing a lot more needy students and uh, rightfully so. Um, they've taken a year off doing the regular social stuff and, and some of the kids are playing some catch up. We realize that. Uh, another one would be chronically late. We have some kids that just can't get to class on time, and we need to dig a little bit deeper to find out why. So as you start to give us those kids, and these are the kids you've already referred to as tardy, maybe they received some lunch attentions. It's been very punitive so far, other than the supports you've given them in class, encouragements, things like that. But for some of our kids, we might have to take it a little bit deeper, bring them into an office situation, do some motivational interviewing with them, find out where they're at, maybe include a parent, but we know how that can stack up against kids over time, the chronic lateness. Okay, the next one would be, this one's a little different. It's frequent hall pass user. Um, administrators see a lot of familiar faces in the hallways. And, uh, you know, I kind of scratch my head and I go, why? Why is this student always out of class? They have a pass and yet they're out there. And I don't like making it a thing for the kids because they always feel things are confrontational because some of our kids are just you know they're they're high on cortisol right now that's just the fact of life um, they're high aced and, and we recognize that so if you've got some kids that are doing a lot of frequent hall pass asking not that you're giving it to them all the time we need to know that too because that could be another group we could be talking to or individual students um, also we have students who sometimes show up to school and as a classroom teacher, you kind of wonder why. They've got other things on their minds. And it's not just one day or two days. It could be since the start of the semester, maybe the start of the school year. So if you've got kids who just can't focus for whatever reason on whatever it is you're trying to deliver to them in terms of content, let us know, okay? Because that could be a whole different discussion we could have with students. All right, we're getting into the, the red or maroon colored ones. These ones are a little bit deeper, um, but if you're aware of some family issues, if you're aware of some sheltering issues, sorry. If you have some concerns, possibility of substance abuse, substance use, um, alcohol, what have you. This is another way of letting us know. You guys are really good about emailing us um, if you think something's happening in the moment. Best thing to do if something's happening in the moment is call 70777 and uh, that way you can get immediate um, response if we have a student that needs to be talked to okay or checked out 
So when we email, sometimes that doesn't get to us till later in the day. The other thing would be like a health related concern. This could be things if you notice kids are squinting in class or they're not hearing. I know it's hard right now because we're all masked up. Um, but anything that could be a physical concern that you feel is getting in the way of their learning, whatever that might be. Next one would be learning challenges or barriers. Um, if you're noticing some skill deficits that are multi-year and you're kind of going, okay, I don't see a label on this student as far as getting IEP support, ELL support or anything like that, um, make sure you check that one. This is not an automatic referral to be evaluated for special services, so just know that. Okay, we're not going to just all of a sudden do a do a, an evaluation on the student, but it just gives us one more piece of information. And more than likely, a counselor administrator might come back at you and say, okay, what can you tell me more about this student? And then the last one, I left this on here for COVID um, because we've had a lot of kids miss a lot of school um, because of COVID uh, protocols. They may not have had pro uh, COVID themselves, but because they've been asked to stay home in quarantine, uh, we've had some kids miss some school. So those are the different indicators. And you'll see right there, if we were still filling this out for the students from Leslie's class, these would be up to three things she would indicate. Okay, the next one are the purple headers, and this has to do with strengths and assets. We just picked these three, because these are three that, if we're working with students, if we know these things ahead of time, that's gonna help us out, okay? If they don't have any of these things, we know we're probably working with a student from square one, okay? Just more information for if we're doing any type of group work or one-on-one -on -one with students outside of class time. Okay, the next one is the way you've reached out as a classroom teacher. Have you already had a contact with a school counselor about the student you're putting down? Okay, we don't expect that for everybody, but if there's some things that have been going on, counselors are a good place to go. They may have some more background information. If it's more of a skills piece um, and you don't see an indicator that they're being serviced through EL or IEPs, special services, um, Make sure you let us know if you reach out to anybody on that. And then, of course, the parents and guardians, because we're always trying to partner with them. That's kind of the, the, the outreach that schools need to guarantee their families. And I think we do a really nice job of that. So um, we want to know if there's been successful contact made. So if you've made an email attempt, you haven't heard back, you would not check that off. If you made a phone call attempt, you've left a message, nobody's gotten back to you you would not check that off. We're only going to see the X's if there's been a successful, I've had contact with a parent, there's been a two-way communication, okay? All right, last part. This is where teachers can give us a little bit more insight. Teachers can communicate if the student can succeed with them. They don't need outside stuff. We've got this, okay, as the classroom teacher. Let us know that. Also, this is where teachers can request support beyond what is available in the classroom because sometimes the student just needs more than what a classroom can offer, okay? And that's really why we're doing this early warning um, approach, because we want to get kids involved with the supports, interventions. Sometimes the intervention can be as simple as time. It could be moving a seat in the classroom. It could be a conversation with an adult in an office space. So whatever that might be, that's what we got to get to our kids as early as possible. Okay, so here are the due dates. You already saw this one. Midterm three grades are going to be due on March 10th, pretty sure 3 p.m. And then the early warning report, and that's what we're talking about right here. Hopefully you will have been keeping track of yours, and then when it's time to dump it into the master, you can do that real easily. Okay, you just find your tab, you put it in there. You're not going to be able to put it on the master tab. No, the only ones that can touch that are admin. And then we have a formula we use that allows each of the worksheets or tabs to talk to each other. So all the information you're put, putting on your sheet will eventually transition over to the master one. Then we can sort, then we can put kids in groups, then we can figure out what are the best practices we can use to help students out. Okay, the next due date, just if you guys wanna mark this on your calendars, won't be until April 8th. That's the Friday before spring break. <laughs> We're already talking about spring break. And then the early warning system report will be due on the 18th. So 10 days later, if you get it done on the 8th, you know, thank you. If you don't get it done on the 8th, you got 10 days to get it done. And then the last two, uh, one will be mid quarter four or midterm four. And then you'll have approximately five days after that to get that in. By then, you know, I don't think the names are going to change a whole lot. Hopefully you're taking names off 
and you're not adding names to your kind of sheet you got your running sheet i guess you call it and then the last one we'll do are the senior apps okay this is going to be our new senior fail form and that way we're learning one practice and we don't have to have a whole new practice so if you are a teacher of senior students this is how we're going to inform counselors and then obviously we have to let parents know too if their students aren't making it won't look like they're going to make it and if they don't make it okay so with early warning um the main thing is uh, we got a couple early interventions um, we feel that academic and social emotional successes are attainable and sustainable for all students we have to believe that and when we do that um, we know that you know we're shooting for all ships rising in the tide and we know we have our gaps and this is just another way to approach those gaps in an equitable fashion, in a school-wide fashion. And you know what? We're going to say in a few years from now, we're really good at this. We're a lot better than we were when we started this second semester of the 2022 school year. But we got to start somewhere. This is a great place to start. You're the right team to do this. And we're going to learn a ton um, in our Tier 2 and our Tier 3 teams about how to best support teachers to basically make teaching a little bit easier okay all right thanks for watching um of course as always shoot me an email bumping me into the hallway but this this kind of goes along with our shared vision in our school we really want all kids to be successful and we got to bring all of our resources together and and do it in just really great ways doing it with fidelity and meeting deadlines and and talking to each other and being collaborative and and putting this whole notion of a multi-tiered system of supports together so that all kids even kids that have the toughest go against them can succeed at high school so anyway thanks for listening you guys are great and hopefully you get to see this before we uh get going on monday the 28th thanks everybody